Good afternoon. This is an update on Major Hurricane Raphael for November 6, 2024. We're keeping an eye on Raphael right now as it makes its crossing over western Cuba with winds of 115 miles an hour. This look at the latest visible satellite imagery courtesy of CyclonicWX.com. And we can see that while Raphael did describe us an eye earlier today, once it got really close to the island of youth, which is in Cuba right here. It underwent some structure changes, likely due to some increasing vertical wind shear from the west. You can see some of the westerly filaments here in the lower levels of the atmosphere hitting the system on the western side, making more asymmetries to the cloud structure here. You can see how much of the deeper convection thunderstorms are weighted on the eastern side of the system, which explains why this eye is actually pretty much cloud filled at the moment. But it did make a brief appearance of a clearing eye, which allowed the NHC to upgrade this to Major Hurricane Raphael. But right now, as it stands, it's probably just underneath Major Hurricane Intensity with 110 to 115 mile an hour winds. Now, when we see this from the water vapor standpoint satellite imagery, courtesy again of Cyclonic WX, we can see there's a lot of drier air over here in the central and southern Gulf of Mexico. There's also some very strong deep layer vertical wind shear that is not being indicated very well on the water vapor imagery, but what really helps is these a uh, couple of thunderstorm cloud filaments, these cirrus clouds moving towards this system. That's that vertical wind shear that we were just talking about. That is on the order of about 25 to 40 knots. That is pretty strong. In fact, probably a little stronger than 40 knots since we have low level trade winds blowing in out of this direction and we have upper level winds blowing in out of the west. So the net value here is vertical wind shear that is pretty um, pretty extreme for the system. And unfortunately, or fortunately, the system is going to be barreling right into that wall of vertical wind shear. And it's going to be very impressive on how much will this affect Raphael as it moves generally northwest and then curves back to the west um, in the central Gulf of Mexico. This was a Air Force 305 mission that did fly into Raphael. And again, you can see very, very strong, intense winds on the southern and eastern quadrants of the circulation, and the pressure remained steady here at 956, which is about the time when this eye became cloud-filled. So it isn't surprising right now if some weakening had taken place right before or really close to soon to become a landfalling system, which again continues the streak of the this hurricane season with most of these making landfall and a few that did not which is pretty remarkable to say the least yeah we had 17 named storms which is already declared an above average hurricane season but we've had quite the amount of landfalls this hurricane season despite we did not get say 31 or 32 named storms which is otherwise declared as a hyperactive season but you could also have the many amount of landfalls to declare that as well and Raphael is proving us that right now with, I think this is 15 named storms that have made landfall already this hurricane season. Most of them in the United States and a few of them outside of that. But nevertheless, Raphael is around 960, 956 millibar system major hurricane on the approach to um, the western central-ish Cuban area. And it's going to cross over this narrow strip of land, which won't have it give it in a lot of time of weakening. So now the question really remains, where is Rafael going to head once it emerges back over the Gulf of Mexico? And could it turn north and impact portions of the Gulf Coast? Well, looking at the GFS model, this the American model, this it has recently initialized at around 12Z. So this is pretty old. Uh, we're going to get our 18Z model run in in the next hour or so. Since we fell back an hour, our GFS model now renders an hour earlier, which is nice. But unfortunately, because I have a really busy schedule today, we're not going to be able to wait for that run to come in. But it's not going to show us much of a difference because we do have our 18Z hurricane models in already. So looking at the GFS, the American model, we can see uh, that the system does emerge out into the Gulf. Now it does move to the northwest because the vortex is deeper and there's a deeper level ridge to the northeast of the cyclone. 
But once it begins to weaken due to vertical wind shear that tilts the vortex and the vortex actually gets shallower, the system will actually get slingshotted to the west. And that is because now that the vortex is weaker and it's more minute, it's going to follow more of the low level trade winds. So you'll see this here on the GFS as the vortex gets more tilted here. All of the heavy rain and thunderstorms waited on the eastern side of the cyclone. Very dilute on the western side, so not much going on there. In the front quadrant, the system's moving toward. Not much rain going on, maybe some light to moderate rainfall with most of those storms. Now, what's going to end up happening is that the system is going to uh, kind of slow down significantly while that vertical wind shear impacts it from the west. This is fairly strong deep layer shear enough that there is virtually no rain at all on the western quadrant of the circulation where there's deeper convection here. There's going to be a little bit of wet weather and messiness going on over uh, Louisiana and Mississippi. But fortunately, that the system is uh, trended weaker in recent model runs of the GFS really is an eye-opener to a lot of people that, okay, we're not going to have to deal with a major hurricane at landfall now over the United States mainland. Now instead, maybe still some showers. Now if we go back at uh, recent model runs, you can see how this did trend stronger, but also it's further south. You can see how recent runs have trended further south with, again, some more rain impacts for the deep south. But nothing like we have seen versus Helene, Debbie, and Milton, uh, Francine, that impacted southwestern Louisiana. Nothing in that sort of books at this given time with Raphael. But nevertheless, it did make landfall um, in or it will or has made landfall in Cuba of this video. So it, it, there were impacts, unfortunately, and there could still be some indirect impacts to the United States. But now when looking at our hurricane models, this is the Habs B model. And I'm going to show you two different scenarios that could still play out here on the table. First, looking at the Habs B run. This is more likely illustrating with what recon has found boy my phone likes to go off 950 millibars so this is again a major hurricane at this time now as it makes its crossing over um, cuba you can see the asymmetry starting to develop here uh, not as much green or darker green um, on the western side and more darker green on the eastern side so there is some vertical winch here that is going to be tilting this putting a little bit of pressure a little bit of breaks on the system and the ending result is once this re-emerges out in the gulf maybe some slight strengthening might be able to take over but it really is going to depend on how this inner core structure holds together if we can get an inner core structure to quickly close off the circulation before enough of that vertical wind shear is able to impact the system um, the system may be able to strengthen a little bit more quickly as seen here on the halves B. Now, uh, it does take also a little bit of time for the vertical wind shear to uh, tilt the vortex of uh, Raphael. And so, therefore, uh, don't expect weakening right when the vertical wind shear happens, but it may take at least 6 to 12 hours for that shear to take place. But whatever shear there is here, there's a lot of drier air. Also, these brown colors, these um, neutral colors over the western side of the system. So eventually what ends up happening as we go uh, further down the road now on the halves B, the vertical shear does try to weaken here. But this is probably an outlying scenario given that partially of the eyewall is eroded. So you can see the northern side. And it does try to come make a comeback with more symmetricalness before maybe some vertical wind shear does try to induce. This is an outlier scenario given that the GFS has trended more in the central Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and this is in five days. So there's a lot of leg room here of possibility. Now looking at the, uh, the HMON model, this is the Hurricane Meso... 
I would have to look at what the mon it stands for, but it's a hurricane model. And so going forward, you can see that the system does try to intensify a little bit, but watch what happens here. The vertical wind shear does try to erode the western flank of the system. This is in about three days. It does it slowly and then really does it by the time we go to 84 hours out. So by this weekend of November 10th, we can see that all the deep convection, the mid-level vortex is here, the surface vortex is here. So there is some disconnection here and with that tilted vortex, which allows the system to really weaken. And it really does in about five days. Um, it's really tilted here from west to east with literally the vortex, the mid-level spin located well to the east of the surface circulation. In fact, really any wind with this would be very weak, anywhere between maybe 30 to 35 miles an hour uh, versus a more stacked vortex. Now, this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center indicating that this will remain a hurricane all the way through at least early Saturday morning, maybe Saturday afternoon with winds greater than 75 miles an hour. This matters a whole lot because it's not just the winds that the hurricane's going to contain, but swells animating out from this. So if you're along the Gulf Coast here of Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, Alabama, and even the Big Bend of Florida, just keep this in mind that you're going to have some surf anywhere between 5 to 15 feet. So any beachgoers this weekend really need to be watching lifeguard flags closely. If they're pink, that means... Uh, Beachgoers are not allowed to be on the beach versus if it's a red flag. That means you could be on the beach, but use extreme caution. Because, yes, this is still going to be a hurricane once it reemerges out um, in the Gulf of Mexico and then moves generally westward. But the good news in today's video, the cone of uncertainty is not impacting anyone at all, but also is very wide. So theoretically, we could have a hurricane that dives this way. Or we could have a hurricane that dives going this way towards Texas. So there's a lot of uncertainty here, at least by Sunday, because there is this is going to slow down quite dramatically to mere miles an hour, maybe three to four miles an hour, maybe even lesser than that. So again, anywhere, if you're in Louisiana, if you're in Texas, and also if you're in Mexico, you still need to be watching this system pretty closely. And keep this in mind, hurricane warnings are still in effect, including for Key West, Florida, under a tropical storm warning. So if you're under any kind of warning, if that's a tropical storm warning or a hurricane uh, warning, you need to take this seriously. That means tropical storm conditions are occurring and hurricane warnings mean hurricane conditions are occurring at this time. So looking at the reasonable ar uh, arrival time of tropical storm force winds for any given location, this is the best chance over the northern Yucatan Peninsula of seeing the highest probabilities, anywhere between 10 and 30% chances of tropical storm force winds arriving by Thursday morning to as late as Thursday night. With tropical storm conditions possible, very slim possibility here over uh, just south of, say, New Orleans, Louisiana, you have uh, it between about Friday early morning to about Friday late morning for that given time frame. And then, of course, maybe Mexico as late as, say, Saturday morning with a very slim chance, a non-zero chance there for the coast of northeastern Mexico getting in on the risk of tropical storm conditions potentially. Now, we don't have the rainfall forecast for the United States or Mexico, but we do have it out for the rest of Cuba. And you can see here uh, over western and central Cuba, you might see still an additional 2 inches all the way up to 12 inches of rainfall. There are some locations here in Cuba that could see up to even 12 to 16 inches of rainfall. That is very significant. There will be some significant flooding. There already is uh, life-threatening to unsurvivable flooding and storm surge conditions happening here in western Cuba. So my hearts and my thoughts go out to all of those that do live in the Cuba area with significant impacts that are occurring as Rafael moves across western Cuba. Now, like we just talked about with the cone of uncertainty with the National Hurricane Center, this is not much different on our Tropical Tidbits spaghetti plot. You can see there is roughly where Rafael is. This is going to be moving generally towards the west um, at about 10, to about 10 to 15 miles an hour, but it's going to encounter weak steering currents, and with a weakening system, this really challenges everything. There are some quite crazy tracks that loop this around several times and tracks that just kind of move this right into the Bay of Campeche 
in about three to five days. So there is extreme uncertainty in the forecast right now. Anywhere between possible outcomes over here to outcomes that are possibly over here right now. Two different groups of um, model members showing two different scenarios. Now, with the intensity forecast, this is a little bit more straightforward. In general, we're expecting some weakening to take place more gradually over the first day or two, and then more rapid weakening is expected in the day three to five time frame. And that's because of the vertical wind shear, that's wind direction change with height, is expected to tilt the vortex with Raphael, and that is expected to lead to weakening. Therefore, my intensity forecast is pretty much down the middle with this system, and I do expect this to become a tropical storm in about three and a half to four days, with the NHC holding on with that a little bit longer, but either way you put it, uh, most of the models are showing this to remain a hurricane at least for the next three to five days. Now, if you found this video really helpful, informative, and detailed, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more updates on the tropics. I do apologize if I have not been uploading every single day as often as I can on these tropical systems. That's because one, we were dealing with the election yesterday. The election results are in and uh, Donald Trump wins. So congratulations to him. But also um, preparing for a birthday party this week. And so there's just a lot going on um, this week. I will try my best at keeping you all updated here on Raphael as long as it remains an intimate threat to anyone living along the Gulf Coast. But you can only do that if you do subscribe, hit the like button, and share this video with your family and friends on social media. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.